Thief Off is, of course, an art fair. You can buy the most beautiful art everywhere here in the building. But there is also an exposition with the name Thief Off Curated. Was it a surprise for you that you were asked for this project? It was completely a surprise, yes. I was busy working in the gallery in the Gulbenkian Museum in Lisbon and I got a phone call from my secretary saying there is a man called, and she couldn't pronounce Hedda van Segelen's name, will you talk to him? And I said, oh yes, yes, that's fine. And then Hedda said that he had this idea. And then I thought, yes, this could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know Tefa before? I'm not, I knew of it, it's famous, but because um, I was working more in the 20th century world, I suppose, and yeah. contemporary, it was less vital for me yeah. to come here. But it was always famous, yes. What is the project exactly? The theme is the reclining figure, but also how the reclining figure uh, becomes the, the landscape or the horizon. So it moves from the figurative to the abstract almost, because the horizontal line, like you see here, uh, between earth and sky, is, a, is another aspect of quite a number of the works you see here. What I thought about was a theme that would allow us to bring in the contemporary artists which Hida wanted, but also to use some of the historic material from the fair, which I thought was the strength of the fair, that yeah. you could have a very big period. Behind me are the works by Charlotte Dumas, the reclining yeah. horses who, after a hard day's work of taking soldiers to the cemetery in Washington, they finally rest, but apparently these horses, they're exhausted by the end of the day. They're taking corpses to the cemetery. It's a very tragic job. Yeah. Um, and she filmed them at night time when they were resting. This is another part and another artist also. This is Sadie Murdoch and she made this project a few years ago but it's always been in my mind. I think it's a great project. She was focusing on this famous reclining chaise longue which normally is attributed to Corbusier. They're interesting because this is colour photography but she has um, covered, covered her skin in black and white makeup so it becomes like a black and white picture. So it's kind of in between the past and the present. And you see how the necklace, the necklace that Charlotte Perriand wore around her neck has kind of been exploded. So it's almost like the whole image has been exploded. And you have the famous chaise long without the figure and with the figure and these layerings of shadows, which are very nice because they reflect, I think, and echo the works by Spalletti next door and by Tremlett. And this reclining figure in the landscape, you almost see that there in the, in the back of this picture. What do you think of the idea to organize a kind of expo at, at the fair? I mean, I think there are various purposes, and one is to introduce new galleries into the fair and to bring contemporary art and new audiences in. But I, I suppose I wanted to make more of what the fair already was. I thought that was such an uh, opportunity to bring in some of the historic material and mix it. And it gives us a chance to have a more open space. It's more controlled, so there's more uh, deliberate dialogue set up between the works, and there's more works by each artist. So, for me, I'm pleased. I think it's, um, I think it's a really good result, and the design looks very good. And I think the gallerists are pleased too. They've had to make some sacrifices. They have less individual space. They don't have tables of their own and all their paraphernalia. But hopefully it works better for the public in terms of seeing a space that's more homogenous. The European Fine Art Fair was started in Maastricht, a city located in the heart of Europe. Up until the 1970s, Europe was dominated by national art fairs hosted in different countries. Yet there was no international art fair that crossed the borders. That is until a number of art dealers and lovers of art decided to start a trade fair in the region that transcends cultures, Maastricht a city that has been conquered by the French, the Spanish, and the Germans. This international climate allowed Tefef to grow into the most famous art fair in the world. The fair is hosted every spring in the trade fair and conference center Mech Maastricht that is used for events as varied as show jumping, culinary festivals, 
international trade fairs, and conferences. Maastricht lies in the junction of Germanic and Roman culture. Even the local residents speak a multitude of languages, and the regional Limburg dialect contains characteristics of Dutch, French, and German. Maastricht is situated on the Dutch borders with Belgium and Germany. In a radius of just 25 kilometers, you can hear Dutch, German, and French being spoken, while English is the medium of instruction at Maastricht University. The famous Maastricht Treaty also saw the birth of a shared European currency, the Euro. Maastricht is a microcosm of Europe. It is a natural melting pot of cultures and languages, of open borders and of trading and trades. The rest of the Netherlands sees Maastricht as a little foreign with an added touch of French and just a hint of Italian. The quality of life in Maastricht is held in high regard. It then comes as no surprise that gastronomy arrived in the Netherlands by way of Maastricht. The city was the first in the country to have Michelin-starred restaurants. The rolling slopes just outside the city are covered in beautiful vineyards where wines are being aged in centuries-old cellars. The historic city center, which dates back to the Roman period of the first century, is an attraction that draws visitors from around the world. The centuries-old churches and ancient city walls and castles imbue the city with an intimate and romantic flair. A city where living is good and where Tefaf has been able to bloom into an unparalleled destination fair. Located between Amsterdam, London, Paris, and Berlin, the city is easily reachable to a large international public. During Tefaf, the entire city and surrounding region revolve around fine art, and visitors from across the world are welcomed with pride and in great style. Maastricht is a relatively small city, but is located in a border region that has several million residents. It is a city of gastronomy, but also has a rich cultural scene with many beautiful museums and theaters. André Rieu, Maastricht's most famous export, performs with his Johann Strauss Orchestra on the large Vrethoff Square every year. This event is visited by tens of thousands of visitors from across the globe. Other music festivals and concerts in Maastricht also draw large crowds to the city. Maastricht doesn't simply rest on its glorious past, but is also dedicated to the future by becoming a global leader in education, innovation, and scientific research. Maastricht provides answers to the questions of the world, especially to the questions about the environment and food provision. Scientists are serving up the first ever man-made beef burger. The cultured hamburger was invented in Breitland's campus in Maastricht. This is meat that is synthetically grown in a laboratory. The academic hospital will soon be opening a European training center for vascular surgery and houses one of the largest brain imaging scanners in the world. Their sister campus, Breitlands Hemelot, is a leader in the fields of chemistry and materials and is the birthplace of Dinema, the strongest and lightest fiber in the world. Maastricht combines the wisdom of age and the vigor of youth. Tradition and innovation go hand in hand. Students from across the globe feel at home in this historic context of quality education, a good quality of living, friendliness, and the city's international character. This is what makes this city and region a unique jewel in the Netherlands.
Maastricht is a historic work of art and an indisputable choice of home for a World Art Fair.